Tom Cruise had one heck of a year in 1983. He had four movies come out, including the teen sex romp Losing It, the Francis Ford Coppola epic The Outsiders, Risky Business, and All the Right Moves. The latter two films helped make him a major star, and all eyes were on his follow-up vehicle, which turned out to be the one and only time Tom Cruise would work with legendary director Ridley Scott on the fantasy epic Legend. <laughs> Now, it has to be said, Legend was a very troubled production and is now mostly seen as a footnote in Tom Cruise's career, one that he rarely talks about, although the film does indeed have a devoted cult following, including Joe Blow's own Jessica Dwyer, who once dedicated a great episode of her show fantasizing about fantasy films to it. One of the most confusing things about the film is discerning between the various cuts, with the film undergoing a pretty belabored post-production process, but more on that later. Legend tells the tale of a princess, played by Mia Sara, who's in love with a forest-dwelling rogue named Jack, played by our boy Tom Cruise, sporting some legendary hair. An evil force named Darkness, played by the one and only Tim Curry, in some of the best makeup of the 80s, wants to cast the world into eternal night by killing all unicorns. Too bad, then, that Jack, wanting to impress the princess, brings her to where all the unicorns are, and she can't help but bait them, allowing the bad guys to take one of the unicorn's horns. Wanting to set things right, she allows herself to be taken by the forces of darkness, and what's Jack gonna do but rescue his kinda beloved, although the relationship seems in a weird gray zone between friends and lovers. I don't know. He's helped in the rescue by some odd forest friends, including the very strangely dubbed Gump, played by David Bennett of the art house hit The Tin Drum. Look it up. At the time the movie was made, Ridley Scott was coming off of two back-to-back -back masterpieces, Alien and Blade Runner, but it's important to remember that the latter film was definitely not a hit when it was first released, leaving him in a vulnerable position when the American studio bankrolling the film Universal saw the final cut. His take on fairy tales and the Brothers Grimm, Legend was in a strange position in that it was too gothic and grim for kids, but perhaps too fanciful for adults. Nevertheless, Scott attempted to make a startlingly original film, and it's striking how different it is from other fantasy movies of the era, which mostly adopted the Conan the Barbarian model of blood and boobs. Now, nothing against blood and boobs, but that's not exactly what really Scott is going for here, now is it? Legend is more mystical and anticipates the way the genre would go once Peter Jackson's version of Lord of the Rings was released, but part of the reason that movie had such a long, long transition to the big screen was that this movie was such a giant flop that studios were terrified of making fantasy films for years after Legend came out. That's why it took 15 years. It also seemed to scare Ridley Scott off the genre for good, and who could blame him? Logistically, the film was a nightmare, with every cast member but Tom Cruise and Mia Sara needing extensive makeup, especially Curry. This was an era before CGI where everything had to be done practically, but Ridley Scott lucked out as far as his cast went, especially with Curry, whose presence and voice is perhaps the greatest special effect anyone could ever hope for. A young Mia Sara, who would go on to star in Ferris Bueller's Day Off the next year, is perfectly cast as the arrogant but ultimately good princess. Her and Cruise certainly look the romantic pair, but here's the thing. Tom Cruise is not great in this movie. He's always been hit and miss in period fare and arguably wouldn't nail the genre until The Last Samurai in 2003. But there's a reason he's never really gone all in on fantasy films and I would never expect him to show up in something like The Hobbit. Legend is pretty much it as far as Tom Cruise's forays into the fantasy genre go. It's not that he's bad per se, he just seems, I don't know, silly. Rumor has it that Robert Downey Jr., Jim Carrey, and Johnny Depp were all up for the role, and looking at their work in that era, I think that Johnny Depp probably would have nailed it. He has more of a flair for roles like this. Tom Cruise just feels too contemporary, like, you know, something off of an MTV music video, especially in the 80s. But, you know, this would turn out to be a misstep for Cruise, and a valuable one that would definitely inform his career going forward. What's sad is that him and Ridley Scott never worked together again, which seems bizarre all things considered, considering they must have been in each other's orbit quite a bit. Perhaps there's some bad blood there, although it definitely didn't stop Cruz from later working with Ridley Scott's brother Tony to iconic effect, and Ridley has been effusive in his praise of Top Gun Maverick. Perhaps the two will reunite someday. But back to how tortured a production this is. Anyone who watches Legend will no doubt be blown away by the production design, with the magical forest set being built on the 007 stage at Pinewood Studios. The production was faced with disaster 10 days before the film wrapped when the stage burnt to the ground. 
Luckily, no one was hurt and the film was able to wrap, but it was a bad omen. Indeed, when he turned in the final cut to Universal, Scott was faced with a conundrum. The studio wanted to market the movie to teens and made him cut it down from two hours to just over 90. In the unkindest cut of all, though, Jerry Goldsmith's masterful score, which took him six months to compose, was scrapped and replaced by a weird electronic score by Tangerine Dream. Now, I love Tangerine Dream, especially the work on Sorcerer and The Keep, but 1986 Tangerine Dream was not 1977 or 1983's Tangerine Dream. They had done a lot of movies by this point, and I don't know, it seemed like they were kind of falling into some kind of schlocky territory. And this is definitely not one of their better scores. Although the song at the end of the movie, Is Your Love Strong Enough by Brian Ferry of Roxy Music, kind of kicks ass. Scott was allowed to release the international cut with Goldsmith's score because 20th Century Fox put it out and, you know, I guess they didn't want that silly Tangerine Dream score. Good for them. But this did lead to some confusion over the years. Kids from the UK grew up listening to Goldsmith's score while kids in the US listened to Tangerine Dreams. As is pretty common for Scott, years later he made the director's cut of Legend, which reinstates the score and runs about 20 minutes longer than the original cut, leading to a major critical reevaluation of the film, because just like his director's cuts for Blade Runner, Kingdom of Heaven, and pretty much any other movie he released the director's cut for, it's better. To me, Legend is an interesting film with some brilliant moments, especially the production design and cinematography, but oddly the thing that keeps it from being great is the miscast Tom Cruise. Nevertheless, it's an interesting curio. Sometimes fiascos and flops are as important to a career as the hits, and indeed Legend only grossed about $23 million in the US. Had it come out earlier, it might have had more of an impact on Cruise's career, but the US release was so delayed that within a month of it opening, Top Gun was already in theaters, and we all know how that went. It would definitely adversely affect Ridley Scott's career for some time though, with his next movie, the noir thriller Someone to Watch Over Me, being an even bigger flop, although it's kind of an interesting little movie if you go and check it out. His stylish Michael Douglas movie, Black Rain, would restore his clout somewhat, and his next film after that, Thelma and Louise, would be another hit, but the rest of the 90s were peppered with financial disasters for Scott, including 1492, Conquest of Paradise, White Squall, and G.I. Jane, although in their own way, all three of those movies are actually pretty good. Everything would change for him after the release of Gladiator in 2000, when suddenly, in his 60s, Ridley Scott would become one of the most bankable directors in the world. And you know what? He's still making great films today, with The Last Duel being criminally underrated. Yeah. Just like my good buddy Tom Cruise, Ridley Scott's a guy you can never count out. And you know what? I hope these two work together again someday soon, because a Tom Cruise movie directed by Ridley Scott, always worth checking out, even if Legend didn't quite work.